Year 13, Chapter 10, Integration, Lesson 1, Calculating Areas. So we're going to start off by having a look at how we can calculate the area between a curve and the y-axis. So this is the area that we are going to calculate. I'll highlight it in green. As you can see, it's bound by this curve, which is the curve y equals x squared and the y-axis. So one way in which we can do this is to find the blue region, which is the area trapped by the curve and the x-axis, and then subtract that from the area of this rectangle. So how do we calculate the area of the blue region first of all? Well, this is equal to the integral between 0 and 2 of x squared with respect to x. So this gives us 1 third x cubed between limits of 0 and 2. So we're evaluating a definite integral and the answer will be 8 thirds. Now, the green area will then be equal to the area of the rectangle which is 2 by 4, subtract 8 thirds. And that leads us to an answer of 16 thirds. And of course, we can say that the unit is square units. Now, there is another way in which we can identify the area. Now, we know that the area between a curve and the x-axis is equal to the integral of the function with respect to x between particular limits. And of course, y is some function of x. So we can reverse this to calculate the area between a curve and the y-axis by rewriting the function as a function of y and integrating with respect to y. So let's take a look at the function. We know that y is equal to x squared but let's rearrange that so x is equal to the square root of y or y to the power of half. So we're basically rewriting it so x is equal to some function of y. So I can now replace x with what it is in terms of y. So it's y to the power of a half. I'm integrating with respect to y. Now what are my limits going to be? Well, let's look at the graph. We're integrating between 0 and 4 on the y-axis. So 0 to 4. Let's perform the integral and see what we get. So integrating y to the power of a half, raise the power by 1, so it's 3 over 2. Divide by this new power of 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we've got to then substitute in these limits 0 and 4. The lower limit of 0 obviously won't make any difference, but we have 2 thirds multiplied by 4 to the 3 over 2. Now 4 to the half is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 2 thirds is 16 over 3. So we get to the same result just by changing the way in which we do the integral. So we can generalise this. The area between a curve and the y-axis is equal to the integral of x with respect to y between limits of y1 and y2. Now it's really important that we understand that when we say we're integrating x with respect to y, x is some function of y. So we rearrange the equation of the curve so it's in the format x equals function of y. 
And of course, the other things to notice are that the limits must be in terms of y. So the limits are y values on the y axis. So we're now going to explore how we calculate the area trapped between two curves or between a curve and a line. So have a look at the sketch diagram. We can see two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, which intersect at two points. We'll call them P and Q, which have x coordinates A and B respectively. Now, I want to calculate the area of the shaded region, which is trapped in between the green and yellow curves. Now, what do I know? If I integrate f of x between a and b, then I will get this green shaded region there, the total area under the curve y equals f of x. Now, if I integrate y equals g of x between a and b, then I will get this yellow shaded region here, the region under the curve y equals g of x. So it should make sense that the white shaded region, this region here, is the difference between the green region and the yellow region. So the area of the white shaded region is equal to the integral of f of x dx between a and b, which is the total green area, subtract the integral between a and b of g of x dx. Now, we can then tidy this up to say that the area between the curves, i.e. the white shaded region, is equal to the integral between a and b of f of x minus g of x with respect to x, because it's much more efficient to subtract the functions and then integrate than it is to integrate each function separately. So this is how we can calculate the area trapped between two curves. Now, it is really important that when we do the subtraction, f of x must be the curve that's higher up or above the other curve. And you can see that from the diagram that the green curve f of x is above the yellow curve. So f of x must be the curve that is on top or higher of the two. So let's have a look at an example. I want to calculate the area that is trapped in between the curve y equals x cubed plus 1 and the straight line y equals 4x plus 1. Now, we can see that the region consists of two parts. There's a region here, which I'll shade in blue, and then there's another region here, which I'll shade in pink. Now, the diagram seems to suggest that the two regions are in fact identical through the rotational symmetry of the curve, but we can check this by doing the integration. Now, we do need to know where the curves intersect, and because I've drawn this accurate in an autograph, you can see that the points of intersection are x equals 0 and x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. But we're going to actually demonstrate this algebraically as well. So we're going to start by finding the points of intersection by solving a pair of simultaneous equations. So we know at the points of intersection, x cubed plus 1 must be equal to 4x plus 1. This rearranges to give us x cubed minus 4x equals 0, x bracket x squared minus 4 equals 0, 
and we can then factorise our difference of two squares here. And this then gives us the three answers that we could see from the graph. So x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals 2 are the points of intersection. So the first thing that I'm going to do is work out the area of the blue region. So we know that that's the integral. Now we want the function that's higher up, which if you can see is actually the straight line. 4x plus 1 subtract the function that is lower down, which is x cubed plus 1. And once we do this subtraction, this has got to be integrated with respect to x between the limits, which are 0 and, of course, 2 over here. So our limits 0 and 2 for the blue region. So the subtraction, first of all, gives me 4x minus x cubed, and it's a definite integral, let's put in the limits. So integrating gives me x squared minus a quarter x to the power of 4. And if I substitute in my value of x equals 2, the value of x equals 0 will just give me 0, I get a value of 4. So 4 square units for the blue area. Now, we suspect that the pink area is also going to be 4, looking at the symmetry, the rotational symmetry of the graph, but we'll check it by doing an integral. So the pink area is equal to the integral between negative 2 and 0, looking at the limits there carefully. And this time, the higher function, the one that's on top, is this one, the red one. So it's x cubed plus 1 subtract the lower function, which is 4x plus 1, all with respect to x. So this gives me the integral between negative 2 and 0 of x cubed minus 4x. And we've essentially done this already. So a quarter x to the 4 minus x squared between negative 2 and 0. Now, substituting in 0 is going to lead to a 0, and then we're subtracting from that what happens when we substitute in x equals negative 2, but both powers are even, so this will result in positive value. So we've got a quarter multiplied by 16, take away 4, and this leads to an answer of 4 as well. So our suspicions were correct, the two areas are in fact actually equivalent. So that tells us that the total area bound between the curve and the straight line is equal to the sum of the two separate areas, so 8 units squared or square units.